Emily Allard's bat control and speed at the top of the lineup set the table for Northwestern softball's offense for four-plus seasons. A four-time All-Big Ten selection and 2011 finalist for the USA Softball Player of the Year Award, Allard holds the Big Ten record and ranks among the top 25 in the history of the sport with 154 stolen bases. After earning all Big Ten and NFCA all-region accolades as a rookie, Allard exploded as a sophomore to shatter the Northwestern school record with a 491 batting average. She stole 45 bases that season to earn the NFCA's Golden Spikes Award as the top base stealer in college softball. In 2012, Allard led the Big Ten in both hits and steals. She recorded at least one hit in 53 of Northwestern's 58 games that season, and batted 500 over four games at the NCAA Austin Regional to lead the Wildcats to the championship round. After missing a year due to injury, she returned in 2014 to cap her career with a fourth All-Big Ten award. She again led NU to the NCAA Regional Championship round, this time batting 533 in four games in Seattle. She finished her career with 306 hits, the fourth highest total in Big Ten history. Allard has remained a central figure in the Northwestern softball community even after graduation, including spirited appearances in both Tempe and Oklahoma City this spring in support of the team. Wildcats, please welcome to the Athletic Hall of Fame from Northwestern Softball, Emily Allard. Um, Dr. Greg uh, stole my joke about March of 2020, so uh, we're just going to kick this off. Um, I've had a long time, two and a half years, uh, to work on my jokes, so if you could just laugh at one of them, that would be great. Uh, but seriously, wow, I've, I've been fortunate enough to listen to a lot of Hall of Fame speeches throughout my time with the NFCA, and uh, as much as I've minimized this honor for myself, I do know how truly special it is. So thank you to the Hall of Fame committee, and congrats to my fellow inductees. Uh, I'm not going to go down a long list of thank yous tonight. To name everyone who's contributed to this award would take hours. But what's interesting about the people here for me tonight is they are all connected to this place somehow. Those who paved the way for me to get here, those I met here, and those who eerily are still connected somehow to my path at Northwestern long after I've left. I know in my heart everyone here for me tonight knows exactly how I feel about them. So instead of that thank you list, I'd like to take this moment with you to reflect. Let's go back to when I was 16. Northwestern softball was ranked number two in the country coming off of their Women's College World Series run. And I, a sophomore in high school, doubted everything from my athletic abilities to the way I dressed. Um, trust me, you should really see the photos. With the schools that were recruiting me, it was inevitable that I would end up away from home. And with that, I knew I had to find a place that felt like home. The home my parents built for my siblings and I always felt like a safe space, a space that was filled with love, and where I could grow and learn and sometimes also make bad decisions in. However, as we all know, home is also work and commitment and hard conversations and intentionally choosing each other day in and day out. Home to me is not always a place, but the people in that space. So on some of my recruiting visits, I was shown the highlights of campuses, but when I came to North, uh, Northwestern, it felt like just another day at home. What drew me here was not the lake, the facilities, or the academics. It was the people. Kate and Carol showed me everyday life at Northwestern. And when I arrived, nothing changed. There was hard work, deep and often difficult conversations, love for the team and this community, and an intellect and a passion for life I had yet to uncover in other places. Most of my memories of Northwestern are not games won or bases stolen, but little moments that have led to lasting relationships. When my teammates put in extra work on the field or in the cages, I went to the bottom floor of Anderson, mingling with the athletic staff, hoping someone would give me five minutes of their day to talk about the future. 
I'm sure there were times Kate and Carol wished I spent that extra effort to feel ground balls just a little bit better, but for every stage, every emotion, and every moment I went through, I had someone to turn to. Northwestern taught me toughness, grit, and boldness. The people here showed me love, perseverance, and of course, how to be assertive. Pieces of me broke here, a lot of pieces, but through the years, we all worked to glue them back together. As I stand here tonight and reflect, it is so vivid, vividly clear that the Hall of Fame path of success for me was not in the accolades or championships earned, but in the resilience I gained. Out of all the numbers listed in my honor tonight, there is one that will never show up, the number of times I showed back up. Surgery after surgery, game after game, ground ball through the legs after ground ball off the glove, I cried, I got frustrated, I vented to my circle, but I woke up each morning ready to go once again. That resilience did not come from me alone. It came from each of you sitting in the crowd tonight. In the trenches, in the operating room, in the training room, in the dugout, in the classroom, at the office, during your own personal battles, and each night as the tears streamed down my face with care for this place and my output within it, I would whisper to myself, I'm just going to try again tomorrow. And that's the beauty of athletics, isn't it? We get lost in the batting averages, the shots on goals, the touchdowns, but it's really about the people we choose to surround ourselves with every day. Sometimes we forget sports will be over for every single one of us, sometimes even when we least expect it. Who will still be there with you? Two final things to leave you with tonight. First, everyone knows quality time is my love language, but I always save positive affirmations for a rainy day. Everyone special in my life has given me several words of encouragement throughout our time together, but I'd like to share a few notes from my family that have kept me going through the years. From my mom, just last year, my God child, you're amazing, just amazing, you find a need and you fill it. From my brother, now a sergeant in the Marines, just a few months ago, I love you, keep scaling client accounts, and I'm proud of you too. From my sister in 2013, my red shirt season, what struck me most about our recent Skype chat was that you smiled so much when you were describing all that you've been having to deal with. True, they were smiles of bewilderment and are you freaking kidding me? But you were smiling at it all. This is why everything is going to be okay because of how you, Emily, respond to things. And from my dad back in 2012, on year three of still figuring out how to play shortstop, I am proudly your father and it just means the world to me to see you growing and maturing as you are. I know you won't quit, and I know you're doing your best, and as long as I can see that, well, I'm good, as they say. So finally, in closing, I had the privilege of giving a speech to the athletic department back at the beginning of my junior year. We don't have the time to go into that tonight, but I talked about how even though I cried three to four times a week my freshman year, if you haven't sensed a theme, I cried a lot while I was here, <laughs> I knew Northwestern was special. The message I left everyone with was, I don't want to be good anymore, I want to be great. And I ended my speech by saying, if I've learned all of this in two years, imagine the person I will be when I graduate. Well, I'll be damned, I'm a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Thank you, go Cats.